Hey YouTube, how's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. This is Thomas with Mr. Fix All Home and Garden out of Raleigh, North Carolina coming at you. Okay, Friday morning. All right, I painted this room yesterday, got it all done, and uh, now I'm going after the trim. And I had a lot of comments uh, last night when I uploaded the video uh, regards to this uh, paint job and uh, my all my ranting and raving and reasons why I tape versus freehanding. Well, now I'm going to get down to the specifics. This is the reason why I do what I do. And I had a couple of uh, subscribers uh, make comments uh, wanting to know or wanting me to show uh, exactly uh, how to tape and the reasons for it. And, and, and set of freehanding and, you know, that whole concept. Okay, well, now I'm at that point where I can actually show you exactly what the end result is. And you'll be amazed. And, and I promise you, this is uh, going to be very informative, so bear with me, okay? Okay. Uh, I got a lot of light, <clears throat> not a lot of light in here because of the sun uh, keeps fading in and out of the clouds, but I've already pulled off all the tape for the uh, part of where I started painting. Okay, the, of course, painted all the walls, and uh, now I'm taping up all the, uh, the windows and the trim work where the problem areas or the overspray and uh, or let's say overspray overpaint uh, from the other crew that came in here, the Serta Pro painters. And I want to show you this, okay? And this is the reason why I do what I do. Now, hopefully the light will be good enough. It's very dark. I can already see it's really dark. Uh, here we go. Some light's coming up. But as you can see, there, there you go. This is the trim. Here's the exact 90 degree, the line. And you can actually see, hopefully, I know this is, this is actually bad. I can actually see there's too many shadows here. But hopefully the sun will peek back out. But here we go. This is what I was telling you about. Yeah, I can see it pretty good through the camera myself. But now this gives me the opportunity to do the trim work. And the reason why I paint, I tape like this is because I want it to be exactly on that line. And if you freehand it, you can say, oh yeah, I can freehand this real quick and, and, and cover it up and get out of here. Well, you know, to, to be absolutely perfect about it, uh, you know, I'd rather tape it this way. That way I've got an absolute straight line. I'm following all the curves of that trim, that molding, and, and I know exactly that it's going to come out perfect, okay? Now, the other thing I found when I started taping all this up is, like I say, they floated, they floated their paint into the trim, okay? Uh, so now that I've got uh, the walls painted, I can absolutely see what I have to paint over to cover this bronze color that they had on the wall, okay? So that's my mission, is to make sure to cover and paint all the other color. So you don't see any of it left, only the new color and the trim. Now, okay, here's the other argument now. And I'm going to try to conceptualize this as simplistically as I can. You've got two materials here. You've got the sheetrock and you've got the trim. Okay? In my opinion, you only should have two colors showing. The wall color and the trim color. Okay? Not caulk. Even though caulk is white or light shade thereof, it is not part of the two materials. Okay? So... These guys that come in and use caulk as their finish to cut the edges in and use that as their, uh, what I call, finish work is wrong. First off, caulk should never show anywhere on a material that can be painted, okay? Doors, frames, sheetrock, okay? Those are materials that have to have paint on them. So when those two materials meet, then that is where the two colors meet. So depending on your, your line that you've created with your construction, then that's where the paint line should be separating those two materials. I hope you get that. You understand that, okay? Now, the perfect example where that does not apply is a bathroom, okay? And I'll show you the perfect example of it is when you do grout work. Okay, so that's why they match up, you know, tile to wood and use grout. And as you can see, this whole thing has to be regrouted. It's cracking all over the place. But 
Maybe that's another project. But when you've got another type of surface where you've got grout and then you've got porcelain or tubs, then they use siliconized sanded grout, okay, to, to make that to make that transition and, and cover the, the you know the, the meeting of the two materials, okay? That's what caulk's all about. But when you start getting into floors, now if this was vinyl floor instead of a tile floor, then they would use white bead of caulk, okay? Simple. Same concept up here. If you go to a sink, okay, porcelain, whatever, and then you got sheetrock. And then you got tile. You got three different materials, okay? So how do you join these materials in? Okay, the transition between here and here and here. How do you do that? Well, you got to use caulk, okay? Well, in this case here, what they did was is they used caulk, but then they turned around and they painted the caulk. And you can see this just looks so shitty. See that? I mean... I mean, come on, guys, really? You, do you think this looks good? I, I'll leave that up to you. I'm, I, you know, I've got my own opinion. But the bottom line is, is that this at least looks a little bit better, where they took the sheetrock and then the, the tile, and he painted right into the grout. Okay, at least he made a straight transition. Okay? All right, enough of that. Back in here. Now, also, the reason why I tape is I'll be able to see where there's problems in the actual trim itself. Because remember, I haven't done any trim work yet, okay? This is just staging the trim work. So when I get ready to paint, I know for a fact that that way, when I start painting this trim, I also have an exact line. Now, of course, you can see, hopefully my camera will pick it up, but see that real slight bit of bronze in there? Well, I don't want that to show, so I want that painted, but I'm not going to freehand it. There's just no way I want to do that. Now, another attention to detail thing that I do that a lot of people will not do, and everybody knows this on top of uh, these casings for doors and windows and everything, nobody caulks up here and nobody freaking paints up here, okay? That's an, another attention to detail thing that I always do. I caulk the top edge of this thing. And also found out what the third color was. Well, guess what? It was pink. See it? There's pink. So this house or this room was painted three different colors. Well, I'm on my third. I'm the third color. So it was first pink, then it was bronze, and then now it's this uh, sandstone or I'm not sure exactly what this light blue, gray, whatever it's called. But uh, the whole point is, is that now another problem is when you start getting, and I'm going to show you another attention to detail thing is when you start getting into these corners. Now, I haven't taped this up. I just wanted you to see this. But there's no way you can get a brush to get into a 90-degree angle in such a tight little... You see how my finger is? How do you get a brush to go into a 90-degree angle like that without actually painting the wall? You can't do it. No one's that good. I'm not even that freaking good. You see what I'm talking about? So what I'll do is I'll tape right along this edge. I'll put a tape right dead there. And then if I, if I get paint over this way, trim paint over this way, it's no big deal because the, the tape is going to save me the grief of having to come back and then touch this up, okay? So I'm going to tape this. This is my last little area I wanted. I left this alone just to give you that example, okay? All right. Now, that's the method behind my madness. That's why I tape. Because I can then correct other people's problems without too much thought behind it, really. If I know how to tape, and I tape it right, then the next phase then would be then the wall. Now that I've got it painted, then I come back, and then all I have to deal with is the trim. But before I do it, I caulk around and make sure I fill in all the little cracks and little, you know, just little areas that just are eyesores and just need to be done. But I don't make caulking my last step or my last part of the paint process. That's what got these guys in trouble. It didn't get them in trouble. The bottom line is it was just their shitty work. But what it was is they used their caulk as their final process, you know. So uh, that is wrong. I don't care who you are. That is wrong. That is not how you professionally paint. You should never, ever, ever see caulk 
in a room, a hallway, you know, whatever. Like I was explaining to you about transitions. Caulk is okay, like if you see caulk around a toilet. Okay, that's cool. Everybody kind of knows that or a base of a sink when it's attached to the floor. That's just a waterproofing thing, okay? It's just a fit and finish thing. You don't have to caulk around a toilet. You don't have to caulk around a base of a sink, but you know, it looks good and it is waterproofing and that's a good way to go. But when you do a room, you know, the bottom line is there should be zero, and I'll repeat, zero caulk showing anywhere. And if you use caulk as your final part of your process of painting, getting you out of the room, then it's wrong. And it's not quality, and I'm going to stand by that. So if you guys want to continue to do it that way, so be it. Do what you got to do, okay? But I promise you, if you sit around a house one day and you're wondering why nobody's calling you and you're a little slow and you're thinking, oh, yeah, let me think back. You know, yeah, I did everything cool. Everything was good. All my work was great. You know, everybody loved me. Guess what? If they don't call you back, they basically thought you were an idiot. Think about that for a while. I've been in Raleigh for six years. I've never advertised. And I'm not bragging. I'm just trying to give you guys some great advice. If you take it, great. If you don't do anything with it, you know what? No sweat off my back. But I'm trying to educate you guys that there are certain processes and per certain procedures that certain quality standards, if you follow them every single time, customers will notice. They will call you back. And they will hire you. And they will say, oh, you know, I know what this guy's ability is and what his quality level is. And there are no questions. No questions about it. And that, you know, I'm just trying to tell you guys, okay? I'm trying to give you some, uh, you know, after 40 plus years of being in this type of business, I'm trying to share with you my knowledge. Whether you accept it or not, you know, I hope you do because I think it'll make you a better person, a better contractor, a better handyman. But the bottom line is if you don't, then, you know, drive on. Do what you got to do. But if you're sitting around the house one day and you're not busy and you don't have no work for a couple of weeks and you wonder why, I'm going to promise you, I can tell you why. Because that means your work sucks. Or you're taking shortcuts. Or you're doing something to, to, to just make fast money. And there's nothing wrong with fast money. As long as what you're doing is good work. Okay, enough. I don't want you guys to be upset with me. That's not the purpose here. What I want you to do is edu get educated. Okay? Just be educated that there are a hundred different ways to do it wrong. There's only one way to do it right. Think about that for a while, okay? Time's up. All right. I'm going to get ready to trim this place out, and then I've got to move to another room and uh, tear off all the uh, uh, wallpaper and start primering that room. So it's Friday. It's beautiful. Cold as hell outside. But, you know, what can I tell you? You know, I'd rather be working inside, you know, instead of being outside freezing my ass off. You guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys on another clip. Tom out of here.